Welcome everyone. One of the things that I found most difficult to get used to was solving NMR, IR, and mass spec related problems. The reason being, it took me some time to master each field, then to take them all and put them together to solve really big problems seemed more difficult, but actually it was easier and hopefully I can share that with you. Let's get started. When you're first given a problem, we have to figure out what do we have available? So the first thing that we have available is this formula, which is of great help because we can just figure out some of the pieces of the compound and then subtract them from this formula to see what's left and what are we working with. Now let's look at the graphs. Here we have an infrared graph. So usually this graph is not of high quality and you're not given this graph on any sort of a digital device. So most students struggle. Also the peaks are often not where you expect them to be. Uh, they don't match the literature value, and this is a great example. I'll be able to show that to you, and I'll also be able to show you how to cope with the fact that these graphs are usually really, 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 really terrible. Uh, in addition, there are some really nice graphs, such as the HNMR, which are your best friend. The way you know this is a HNMR graph is because the value only goes as high as 10. There's a carbon NMR graph, which you know because the value goes as high as 200. And this is typical of a carbon NMR graph. So let's label these for ourselves. We have a carbon NMR graph, an NMR graph, and we have a hydrogen NMR graph. Let's get started. In broad strokes, uh, there are very few things we have to try to figure out from an IR graph since the quality is so terrible. We usually look for a smooth curve with, you know, that's on this side of 3000. So we look for smooth curves, which can be OH, COOH. We look for twin peaks, which can be NH2 related, uh, things like that. But right now, here we can tell roughly at the 3000 point, I'll zoom in so you can see that it was actually 3000 right here, right? You can't do that on a piece of paper, but luckily we're digital right here. So none of that is showing up. And we don't have to concern ourselves with that. What we do see is kind of a simple linear peak here, which usually tells you there's an sp3 carbon hydrogen bond. It doesn't tell you what's bonded here. It just tells you there's a sp3 carbon hydrogen bond, and there's a few of them. So that's one takeaway, and we can ignore all this. Other takeaways, you always look at the 1700 because you're looking for the carbon oxygen double bond that lies around there. Now we do have a peak coming to the left of this, which usually could indicate, you know, ketone, or it could indicate ester, or it could indicate aldehyde. Now, the ketone, ester, and aldehyde, they all have very specific uh, signature peaks that we can look for. So usually we figure out it's a, if it's a ketone by the process of elimination, because ketone doesn't have a specific peak. Ester, on the other hand, ester, we go looking for 1050 and 1250. And this is not an exact science. Anything in that general area means you have hope. So, you know, don't rule esters out easily. Same thing goes for um, aldehydes. For aldehydes, we go looking for a peak around, uh, it's a twin peak again, and we go looking for it around 2820 and 2720. And these are usually much clearer and easier to either find or rule out. So let's start with aldehyde. If we go to this area, there's roughly 2800, there's roughly 2700, good enough for 28, 20, 27, 20, all that. I'm just gonna draw a line up and see what goes. I really don't see any peaks here. So it's not an aldehyde, right? This I can rule out with a great degree of confidence. What else? Let's look for 1050 and uh, 1250, so that would be right, 1200, 1250, that would be right here. So if I go up from here, there's kind of sort of, up, you know, I don't know which peak to look at, but there's sort of two peaks around here. One, we were really just looking only for one. And there's kind of sort of a peak right there in this general area. So I want to rule out Esther by saying, oh, this is too far, but I really can. not So this is a maybe Esther. Right, so this could either be an ester or this could be a ketone. Now this is where, you know, this is where you stop and you don't try to get any more information out of your IR because they're generally very, very terrible. So all you look at is, wait a second, there is C6, right, H12, 
O2, two oxygens. And esters usually have two oxygens in their template. So let's just, you know, let's just bank on the maybe ester. And if the math doesn't work out, we'll do, you know, we'll turn around and try to look at it as a ketone. So it's maybe a ketone and it's maybe an ester, but it's definitely not an aldehyde. That's what the first graph helped us figure out, nothing more. Now we move on to HNMR and we see that, you know, there's a singlet here. There's no split in this peak and there's a singlet here. So that means we have hydrogen environments that are very lonely. And we see that this peak is roughly, you know, one third the size of the other one. So this is one X and this is three X. Now, if we look at the number of hydrogens, we have 12 hydrogens. That really neatly splits up into three hydrogens and nine hydrogens. And three plus nine is 12. So we could possibly have three hydrogens here and we could possibly have nine hydrogens here. Now, nine hydrogens are not on the same molecule. They're in the same environment, but that's a clue for us. Lastly, we have four carbon environments, A, B, C, D. You don't have to number it like that. If you want, you can number them. One, two, three, four. So it seems like we know absolutely nothing and we have a maybe, and it seems we're in a terrible situation and we'll lose points on this for no good reason, but actually it's not so bad. Let's just draw four carbon environments for ourselves. One, two, three, and four. Okay, I think I uh, apologize. I think my screen glitched there for a second, but let's continue. So let's imagine we have four carbon environments and let's just try placing things in there, right? So we have, definitely we have a carbon oxygen double bond right? You can place it really anywhere, but you know there's going to be something to the left and you know there's going to be something to the right. So I kind of placed it in two. I could have placed it in the box number three. Let's try that as well. Why should I place it in that box? Let's just treat it like Legos and say, well, it's got to be in one of the middle boxes. So I'm just going to put carbon, on, oops, carbon oxygen right there. Then I know there's a one very lonely um, hydrogen. So this, this might be just CH3, right? That's, that's a distinct possibility. So I'm going to roll with that. So I'm going to say, maybe I'm connected to a CH3. Maybe I'm connected to a CH3, right? What else do I know? Um, we said that maybe there's an ester, right? So we know the ester format looks like that. So there's an oxygen and then oxygen bonded. So let's try that out. We're going to say, okay, we probably have an oxygen here bonding to something. We probably have an oxygen here. I'm just trying to show it doesn't matter. Right, one, two, three, four. I just drew four carbon environments, but we're gonna come out with the same molecule. No matter where you had placed your carbon, oxygen, carbonyl, as long as your carbonyl was somewhat, oops, and we're back. As long as your carbonyl is in the middle, is what I was trying to say. Okay, because you have something on the left and something on the right. Okay, moving on. So we have you know, three carbons, three hydrogens here. So this could be just three CH3s, right? Because uh, that's what we're looking for. We want, we have a, something to separate, right? We said that hydrogen singlets happen when things are not next to each other. And we have this oxygen to separate things out. So if I have a, you know, um, drew it poorly, maybe I'll draw it again. If I was CH3, CH3 and the CH3, this, this might be it. But you know, um, wait a second. Oxygen doesn't connect to CH3. That's not how oxygen has to want. So I made a mistake. Let me fix that. Uh, so oxygen actually can't go here if you think about it. This is good. Hopefully somebody caught me. Oxygen is not a carbon environment. So I'm not going to place it in box three, right? I'm going to place a carbon in box three. And then I can have three CH3s on that. Hopefully that makes sense. So I have carbon, oxygen, you know, I had figured that out and you had three CH3s. And no matter how you choose to draw, draw it, the only thing that can go in the middle of oxygen and CH3 right there, like it went here, is are exactly the same structure, just showing anyone can do it any way they want and the Legos will fit together, would be carbon, right? And how, how do I know this will be carbon? Well. There's C6, right? How many carbons have I accounted for? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I've left with one carbon. There's the sixth carbon. What else? There's 12 um, 
hydrogens. We already did that, right? Three and three. We already broke that up, 12 into three and nine, based on these heights. We said, oh, there's three hydrogens all by themselves, and there are nine hydrogens all by themselves, not affecting each other. And uh, so, you know, no matter how you draw it, you get the same molecule and oxygen is not there. And we're done. So, you know, if somebody asks us, what molecule do you have? We can draw this. You can say, well, we have a ester and uh, this ester looks like this. It has C6 because one, two, three, four, five, six. It has H12 because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right? And it has uh, two oxygen, which is what we started with. And it fits all the clues because let's look at the carbon environments. One carbon environment by itself, second carbon environment by itself, third carbon environment by itself, fourth group of carbon environments by themselves. Uh, what about hydrogen? Well, there's one hydrogen singlet, no other hydrogens to bug it. There are some other hydrogen singlets, nine of them, nobody to bug them. And, you know, so these should be like height of nine roughly, and they should be a height of three roughly relative to one another. And if we go here, we see that, yeah, there's roughly, you know, height of three, whatever, three centimeters, three meters, I don't know. And then there's roughly compared to that in context, one, two, three, nine, a height of nine. So that would be the answer. And hopefully this feels easy. This was just the first example. I'll share more examples on how to solve HR, uh, not HR, IR, NMR, and mass spec problems. Thank you for listening.